Hello friends, welcome to Linux classes. This is the first lecture of this course module that is Linux administration with advanced troubleshooting skills. So friends, in this lecture, we would be understanding about introduction and history of Unix Linux. Friends, this is a theoretical session, so you have to bear with me. And in the coming lectures, we will have a lot of lab sessions with theoretical sessions. So friends, let's start. So what is Unix? So Unix is a computer operating system. Everybody know that. An operating system is the program that controls all the other parts of the computer systems, both the hardware and software. It allocates the computer resources and schedules tasks. This is what we are keep on listening about the Unix. Let's understand Unix with an example. Unix is a multi-user, multitasking operating system. It means many users logged into the system simultaneously, each running many programs. So friends, let's try to explain this with an example. I'm taking an example. We have seen that we use few websites for the reservation of the tickets. It could be you know uh, air tickets, it could be railway tickets. So users, they are usually logged into the website and that website is hosted on a Unix server. And at the front end, we are just in the browser, we are putting the name of the website and logging to the system. And this is what happening, this is what doing by the multi-users. So multi-users, they are simultaneously logging to the website and your Unix server is responding to each user. So this is the feature of the Unix. Multi-user can able to log into the system simultaneously. And after logging to the use to the system, what happened to the website? The user is filling some form for the reservation, like the details of the name of the persons. So all these things we are doing once we log into the system. So this is called multitasking. So Unix is an operating system which is responding to the each users who is doing some task on that. So this is what which makes Unix apart from the other operating system. So Unix is a multi-user, multitasking operating system. It means many users log into the system simultaneously, each running many programs. And apart from that, it is the kernel's job to keep each resources and users separate and to regulate access to the system hardware, including CPU, memory, disk, and other devices. As we all know that the major part of a you know operating system is uh, CPU, memory, and disk. So it's the kernel responsibility to allocate each process with some memory, some CPU, how much it should be, that is being decided by your kernel. We will discuss more on the kernel once we will have the session on the kernel modules. Let's move to the next, that is about the history of the Unix. So we have to just read it out. First version was created in Bell South, AD&D Bell South in 1969. Some of the Bell Labs programmers who had worked on this project like Ken Thompson, Janice Richard, Root Candy. So they people, you know, designed and implemented the first version of the Unix on a PDP-7. So we should know what is PDC-7. PDC-7 was, was a mini computer produced by Digital Equipment Corporation as a part of the PDP series and that is introduced in 1964 and it was the first to use their flip clip technology along with few utilities and it was given the name Unix and you can see January 1, 1970 is the zero time for Unix. So this is the history of your Unix. So you should keep in mind what is Unix and what is uh, the history of the Unix. Let's move to the next PPT. Here, the history of Unix, like 1977, there were only 500 Unix sites worldwide. 1980, the BST 4.1 Barclay software development, 1983, Sun OS, and like this way, 1988, AT&T and Microsoft jointly developed system we release. So these are the, you know, development on the Unix on timely basis. And 1991, the Linux was originated. So this course is basically on the Linux. So we'll move to the Linux. The history of Linux, Richard Matthew Stallman. In 1971, the Richard Matthew Stallman joined MIT Artificial Intelligence and this was the man who is having a very good knowledge on the hacking and he was known by a RMS, Richard Matthew Stallman. And at that time, all the programs used to share their code freely. And that time, what happened in 1970s? The people, you know, they are creating some codes and they are freely available. And he was the man who was having very good knowledge on this, hacking on all those and programmers. In 1980, you know, with the advancement of 
a lot of companies and they started doing you know uh, refused to share the codes with their clients and they began restricting copying and redistribution of their softwares and by copywriting it okay so this is what is happening in the uh, later ages like in 17s with the advent of portable softwares in the response to this trend stallman was not happy with that who believed in the principle that software has to be free always and founded the free software foundation in 1985 published the genu Man manifesto so this stallman they have you know he was in the principle that the software that should be that should be free always and they have you know published the genu manifesto so what is genu here we need to understand here what is genu a linux is an operating system a series of programs that let you interact with your user and other computers an operating system that is consist of various fundamental programs which are needed by your computer so that it can be communicate and receive instruction from the users read write and blah blah to hard disk tape drives printers control the most important part of os is the kernel okay in a gnu linux system linux is the kernel component and rest of the system consisting of the programs many of which were written by or by the gnu project okay so that's why it is called the gnu linux the linux if you say linux linux is just a kernel only the complete linux is made of kernel with lot of tools so just this gnu project is basically you know a lot of people they are working for the gnu project they are developing small small utilities small small softwares so complete linux if you say operating system is called the gnu the this manifesto outlined his motivation for creating a free os called gnu so they were working on like they have to you know create a free os called gnu which would be the compatible with unix he along with a group of like minded programmers started working and developing the tools needed to make a complete os so till the time they doesn't have you know free os so they people are working on that on the basis of gnu project in the same year 1985 a professor by the name andy tonen born who wrote a unix like operating system that is from scratch for the intel i386 so that was the linux was the first unix operating system which was you know which was uh, for, which was uh, for the platform of intel okay so andy toneman he was the man who has written this uh, unix operating system and from scratch and that will be specially for intel platform in 1981 89 the stall one released the first program independent of the gnu public license now properly known as gpl or copy left now we here we have, we need to understand what is gpl or copy left so what gpl says gpl is your general public license it's a free license software that is properly used across the world it allow users to study run share and modify the software this license was originally written by richard stallman from the free software foundation for the gnu project the first came into the picture that was on september 1983 so the only thing the gnu lacked was a complete free os in 1970 the finnish student by the name linus todal studying in the university of helsinki came into the contact with andy toman os minix the linus wanted to upgrade minix by putting more features and improvements now at that time they have the you know urix they have the kernel but that is for the that is a minix but it was provided by toriman to do so so linus wanted to upgrade minix by putting some features and improvements but tonen bon was not you know ready for that then linus decided to write his own kernel and release it under gpl so here this Lin linus kernel was written by linus and uh, it was properly known as linux so friends we need to understand what is linux linux is a free unix type operating system originally created by linux total with with the assistance of developers around the world it was originated in 1971 as a personal project of linus total a finnish graduate student the kernel version 0.1.0 was released in 1984 and today the most recent version is 3.10 this series 
and that is developed under the GNO, General Public License. Okay, GNO is a project on which we have a lot of people, a lot of minded people, they are working to create free utilities. So, this Linus told us they have created the only kernel. Okay, and in this GNO project, we have a lot of people, minded people, they are creating so many utilities. So, all combined kernel with all the utilities become a complete operating system. That's why we called GNU desk Linux operating system. GNU slash Linux. Developed under GNU and GPLUX, the force code for Linux is freely available to available. Red Hat Enterprise Linux is an enterprise target operating system. It is it based on mature open source technology and available at a cost with one year Red Hat network subscription for upgrade and support contract. Linux is an open source so we need to understand what is open source. Open source means software and source code are available to all. The free foundation, software foundation is specified for freedoms, freedom to run the program for any purpose, freedom to study, modify your source course, you are free to do anything. But it should be under the GPL license. Okay, it, it doesn't mean like, you know, you can uh, modify the source code of a Linux, okay. That is up to you. You can do it. You can distribute. You can give it to anybody. But as per the GPL, you cannot sell. Okay. So this is the some restriction you can say. Open source means you are free to do anything with that. You can modify it. You can create your own Linux operating system. Anything you can do it. Freedom to create derivatives programs. Many open source licenses listing each with different particulars. I think that's all for this session. And Linux distributions, we have these few distributions from where you can have the Linux operating system. So friends, that's all for this session. It was a bit, little, little lengthy and theoretical. Hope you have got some idea about Linux operating system. So friends, uh, in the next lectures, we will have the lab sessions and the theoretical sessions. So thanks for bearing me and uh, thanks for watching.